Hey guys, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Anar and I'm a self-taught software developer. So in this video, I'm going to talk about moving from quality assurance to software development. First, I want to go into some reasons why you might want to do this. And then I'll talk about how you could do this and how I actually did it myself. So let's start with the why. Why do you want to become a software developer? There tends to be a perceived prestige with software development. Some also think that moving from software testing to software development will increase their salaries. Now these reasons are fairly superficial. And if you're considering a move from quality assurance to software development, first you need to make sure that you're doing it for the right reason. The only reasons you should consider moving into software development is if you either enjoy coding or you enjoy solving problems. Because that's what your everyday is going to look like. If you don't enjoy programming or you don't enjoy solving problems, you're not going to be happy and therefore you're not going to excel and become a good software developer. And even if you go back to those superficial reasons such as salary, you're not actually going to make more money than a good quality assurance professional if you're a bad software developer. So let's talk about the how. How do you go from QA or software tester to software developer? Step one is kind of obvious. You have to learn to code. Learn programming basics and programming fundamentals. Don't do some sort of course on Udemy that covers a web framework like React or Spring or Node.js. Pick a simple programming language like Python or JavaScript and learn it to the point where you could write basic scripts with it. Maybe a program that sums two numbers or gives you a random number every hour, something along those lines. You want to make sure you understand classes, methods, functions, variables, loops, those underlying things that are common in most programming languages. Once you have a basic grasp of a programming language, apply it to test automation. This is something I did myself. I came in as a QA tester to a company that had zero test automation and I essentially started the test automation framework and started building upon it. Don't be afraid to ask for help. I had some developers help me out in the beginning. It was a lot to learn. And if you have decent coworkers, chances are they'll be happy to lend a hand. If there already is some sort of test automation setup, fantastic. Take an active role in it, contribute to it, kind of seek opportunities to actually work on it. As you contribute to it more and more, as you write more and more test scripts, you're going to notice that you get better at programming. Some things that used to throw you for a loop, they used to be confusing, they just come naturally. Now your early code is going to be bad and that's okay. Everybody has really bad code in the beginning. Once you actually get comfortable writing test scripts, revisit your old code, the really early code where you just started and see what you could make better. Consistently revisiting your old code is going to build good habits and generally make you a better programmer. Take that test automation project seriously. There's really two ways you could go about it. You could just say, hey, I'm in QA, programming is not my primary job. I'm going to take this script from somewhere I found online, copy and paste it, maybe change some things. And if it works, that'll be it. If I need to do something similar, I'll just copy and paste it again. While that'll work, that's not the attitude you should have if you're planning to move into software development. The second way is to take the project seriously, to try to apply principles of programming and principles of good code design. One of those principles is dry, don't repeat yourself, which essentially means don't copy and paste any code. If you see some code that could be reusable, take that code and put it into a function. Use proper names, read up on naming conventions for variables and for functions, and basically try your best to write quality code. It doesn't have to be perfect, but as long as you keep trying and you keep iterating, it's going to build good habits. Something that's going to help organize your code very well as well is a design pattern. So when I first started writing automated test scripts, I followed some blog and my scripts were kind of all over the place. Later on, I had a developer actually help me set the project up so it followed a strict design pattern and it became a lot more manageable. I would recommend talking to your software development colleagues. This isn't going to take them a lot of time and I'm sure they'll be happy to help. Okay, so let's say you reach this point where you have this well-built-out test automation framework. You don't really feel like there's much left to learn. This passive state you're in now where you're just writing things mechanically because you're familiar with everything that goes into test automation, and this is something you don't like, then software development is definitely for you. This is a typical response from a software developer. Software developers hate being bored. They hate doing mechanical tasks. They hate doing the same thing. They always chase hard problems or new problems or new technologies. The next thing I would recommend you do is build a personal project. This actually doesn't have to happen after you master test automation, but I think it will help because a lot of the skills will carry over and there will be new things to learn in this personal project. So it won't be a complete uphill battle because there will be things you'll be able to transfer from the test automation and it won't be boring because there will be all this web stuff that you can now learn. So what I did and what I would recommend you do is pick a personal project that's kind of relevant to the application at your work. And this is what I mean. I'll give my work application and the application I built as an example. So the application at my workplace is essentially a bunch of charts, widgets and visualized data. So I also had a bit of an interest in stocks, so I decided to build an application that visualizes data for stock prices. 
I created widgets, I created charts. I also created a database for my application which showed things like usernames, passwords, and stock symbols. I actually really enjoyed this project, I got really into it, and I added functionality where you could log in and actually buy and trade stocks with made up money. This is what's known as paper trading. You could open an account, say deposit $10,000, but you're not actually depositing anything, and then you could search up real stocks and buy real stocks with this made up money. Then you could log back in the next day or later that day and the widgets would tell you if the stock went up, if the stock went down, what your portfolio looks like, etc. A lot of these additional features were implemented just because I wanted to implement them and because I was having fun doing so. But the value that this brought was I was able to go to my direct manager and actually show him an application. He was pretty impressed that a software tester essentially put together an application that looked a lot like the application we had at our company. And as the saying goes, a picture is worth a thousand words. Of course it was much less complex, but it looked the part. It had charts with very similar looking data plotted on very similar looking charts. You were able to log in, log out, and at the end of the day, you're comparing something that was built by somebody just new to programming versus something that's built by something like 20 or 30 software developers. So even the fact that there was a bit of a resemblance was impressive to my direct manager. And I think this really did play a key role in showing that I could do the job and I was willing and able to actually push myself, learn the things that needed to be learned, and do the work. Talking to your manager and just telling him you want to be a software developer might come off like maybe you heard it was cool somewhere or something along those lines, but actually putting in the work and presenting it paints a different picture. This leads me directly into my next point, which is approach your manager. Express your newfound interest in software development. Be polite, you were hired to be a software tester after all, not a software developer. Continue doing your job and doing your job well, show that you are a good employee. Being demanding and slacking off at this point is only going to make things worse. But at the same time, make sure you get an answer. Make sure you get either an answer for when this is going to happen, if it is going to happen, if it can happen, or some sort of action plan, which will take you from software tester to software developer. If it is expressed that there is no opportunity for you to transition to software development within the company, it may be worthwhile looking outside of your company. The good news there is you have professional experience programming from building out all the test automation, and you have a personal project to showcase your web development skills. These two things are going to work in your favor when looking for a job, and it will definitely make you a better candidate than when you were first starting off. I actually wouldn't shy away from showing off your test automation because software developers actually like testing skills. It may sound like a long difficult journey, but it's well worth it. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, click on the like button, subscribe to the channel, and let me know what you thought in the comments below. That'll be all, see you next time.